that's very interesting. So it's becoming more, um, it, it's evolving to be not just a set of applications, but to use your word, the platform. It's a platform that's going to be used to enable a lot of this innovation in addition to the applications themselves, which is interesting. Um, so, so you talk about uh, data sphere. You mentioned that a moment ago. I've also seen you mention in your in your writings and on LinkedIn posts that um, you mentioned that SAP Data Sphere is taking over where SAP BW left off. Uh, what what do you what do you mean by that? First of all, how does Data Sphere compare to BW, and how's BW evolving into Data Sphere? How do they how do they connect or not? <clears throat> so uh, SAP BW is the SAP uh, data warehousing solution. It's been around for a long time. It really is an incredibly powerful solution. Nothing really comes close in terms of the the functionality and the scale of what it provides. I mean, we have truly some massive organizations that run their organizations using the data from SAP BW. Um, but it's not a cloud native solution. Uh, so in the future, our, our innovation is going into SAP data sphere. So it's built on top of the SAP business technology platform. And it covers um, cloud data warehousing functionality in general, but really a little bit beyond because it is this notion of a business data fabric. So you can, it's, it's a semantic layer, if you like. It's an abstraction layer that allows you to connect to lots of different data sources, leaving it as much as possible where it already is, either inside your SAP systems or outside, and you still get an overall view uh, of what's going on throughout your organization. So at one level, it is a long-term replacement for BW, but I emphasize that BW is not going anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. SAP BW for HANA, I think we promise to maintain it till at least 2040. So <clears throat> there's no you know, short-term need for anybody who's really happy with BW today to go elsewhere, but for future innovation and as our customers move to cloud solutions like S4HANA, they tend to implement um, SAP Datasphere as part of that. Actually, a couple of the Innovation Award winners jumped to mind. So one is uh, Brightspeed. They're a U.S. telecommunications internet provider. They do a lot of uh, broadband for rural communities, for example. And they're actually a classic example where they, had, um, they have SAP data, but they also had a data lake using Google and BigQuery, and mm. they wanted to combine that. But part of the problem was that the SAP data is very uh, multifaceted. There's a lot of context that comes with SAP data, and it's hard to move it to a data lake. You have to sort of flatten it and put it in the data lake, and they were, they were struggling to rebuild that context and combine the information effectively. Um, so they've now moved to Datasphere for their SAP data. So they still have their data lake, but it's the data lake and Datasphere working together to give them that overview, the bi-directional uh, movement of information. And they're moving to having Datasphere as the sort of central hub with that single view of the organization uh, going forward. That's very interesting. Oh, very cool. Um, and, it, and how does... Datasphere and AI, you know, how do they tie together with, with Jewel and, and the, AI, the AI innovations that you work on as well? How do, how do those do that? Well, so let me start, let's start with the big picture. Um, the power of AI is in many ways the power of data. You look at what's happening with the large language model uh, world right now. There's a lot of competition between all of these different large language models between uh, ChatGPT and Gemini and Llama 3 coming out. <clears throat> and a lot of the experts believe that essentially what they're scrambling for now is who has the best quality data. They believe that like the, the quality and quantity of like good data is going to make the difference in creating the model. So when it comes to business use of AI and business data, I don't think that it's controversial to say that the best quality business data in the world is stored in SAP systems. We've mm -hmm. been a market leader for business applications for a long time. There are obviously lots of other vendors out there, but SAP has the, the lion's share of high quality business data. So we're looking to obviously help our customers and the whole SAP ecosystem leverage that, the power of all of that data so that we can all be more successful. So we're working on um, 
research projects such as an SAP foundational model that is leveraging generative AI approaches, like the, the transformer approach of GPT, uh, the T, you know, the T in GPT. Uh, but that's been used for uh, text data or image data, but business data is typically stored in the form of columns or entity relationship models. So we're looking to figure out how can we take the power of business data and make that a core part of AI. So how we do that, obviously, we'll be leveraging the, the BTP functionality. So we have an AI foundation with everything you need to to um, to get the data, track the progression of your models, swap in different models. So, you know, you can try, hey, Claude from Anthropic, does that work better than GPT or Llama 3? Because there's a lot of alchemy involved in using AI right now. You, to find the right combination of inputs, the grounding for your AI, and the right model. And then there's a bunch of trade-offs in terms of uh, how much it costs, how fast it is, how accurate it is. So we, we're leveraging our 50 years of experience of business processes. So we can know where to find those specific decision points that AI can provide the biggest benefit. And then what combination of all of those attributes gives us the best result. And then we can just provide that to our customers. Um, but going forward, we've talked about data sphere. At the end of the day, we need a coherent approach to data across that whole spectrum from, you know, uh, image, but also business data, uh, sorry, uh, text, but also business data to create that foundation for the future. Now, a lot of that is, it's moving incredibly fast. Nobody has the answers on how to do this, but we're investing a, a lot of time and money working with our experts and all of our partners to make sure that we're ready for the future. That's great. That's really cool.